Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Gabriel and I'm back with another prophetic word from the Lord. Now today's word is going to be for Chris Brown and his female fans. So if you're a woman and you love Chris Brown, you listen to him, you admire him, this word is also for you. So again, this word is for Chris Brown, singer, songwriter, R&B artist, and his female fans. So I received a dream from the Lord on September 19th, 2024. And yesterday, October 1st, the Lord gave me the interpretation of this dream. So this is why it's taken me a couple of days to release this prophecy. Now, basically in this dream, there were two parts. There are two different scenes where I was interacting with Chris Brown. Now, the first scene of this dream is actually a bit explicit. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, I just hope that you guys can read between the lines. Okay, so in this first scene of the dream, I was in a very dark theater sitting on an elevated bed and the bed was white. Now, there were other people around me that were sitting on their own elevated bed. So it was a big dark theater. Everyone's on these elevated beds and we're watching a music video on a projector screen. The music video had Sabrina Carpenter and Shay Mitchell, but that's a whole nother prophecy, so I'm not gonna get into that. But we were watching that music video on the beds, and then Chris Brown walked into the room. Now, when he walked into the room, he walked directly to me, started flirting with me, talking to me, you know, spitting game. And I felt very special, because I'm like, okay, like Chris Brown is coming to talk to me. Now, the flirting continues, and then Chris Brown ends up getting in my elevated bed. So we're now cuddling in the bed, watching this music video, and his hand starts, you know, traveling to a certain part of my body that it shouldn't have, okay? So he's doing, you know, what he's doing to me. And as he's doing this, I end up calling him by the wrong name. So I ended up calling him Eric. And when I called him Eric, he pushed me away and got very, very mad and offended. So then he went on to say, you know, I'm Chris Brown. Do you know who I am? Like, what do you mean, Eric? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, he just got very mad that I called him by the wrong name. And at that point, I started getting scared because I was like, okay, I don't want this man yelling at me. So I ended up trying to play it off. So I was like, oh, I didn't mean it. I called you CJ. I called you CB. Like, I just made up something so, so he could calm down, basically. So that was the end of the first scene of the dream. And I went to the Lord about it because obviously, you know, some interesting things happened and I've never dreamed about Chris Brown before. So when I went to the Lord, this is what he told me. The Lord says, Chris Brown feels entitled to have sexual relations with any woman he chooses. If they choose not to stroke his ego or entertain his advances, he gets very angry and aggressive. Now, if you remember the early part of this scene, right? Chris Brown came directly towards me. He was flirting with me, you know, chatting me up, spitting game. And I felt very, very special. So the Holy Spirit revealed to me that this was the effects of love bombing. So the Holy Spirit revealed to me that Chris Brown uses love bombing to reel women into his grasp. Then the Lord went on to say that Chris Brown is a womanizer and he abuses his fame, power, and status against women. So whether you like Chris Brown or not, there's no denying that He's one of the greatest entertainers of this generation. He's very talented. A lot of people love him. You know, his music is good, you know, in the worldly sense, right? But the Lord revealed to me that his fame, power, influence, he uses that to abuse women. Now, that's the interpretation and the word the Lord gave me from scene one of this dream concerning Chris Brown. So let's get into scene two. So in this second scene, I was walking into a very large tennis court area. It was gated as well. So as I was walking into this tennis court area, I realized that there was no net in the middle and there was a bunch of people there, specifically women. So yeah, this gated tennis area um, was packed with women. There were a few men, but mostly women. And I end up making my way through the crowd to get to the front. The closer I get to the front, I realize there's a stage. And on the stage is Chris Brown and dance choreographer Nicole Kirkland. So I ended up making it to the front of the crowd and I'm right at the stage. So on the stage is Chris Brown and Nicole Kirkland, but there are also a few, you know, background dancers. So I end up yelling to one of the background dancers and I ask her, you know, what's going on? You know, what is this? And she ends up telling me that this is basically an audition for Chris Brown's new music video. Now, if you're not familiar with the dance space, you know, choreographers and things like that, Nicole Kirkland is actually a very popular choreographer out in LA and she occasionally choreographs to Chris Brown's songs. Now on a few occasions, Chris Brown has actually popped up at her classes, right? So Nicole would be teaching her choreography to a Chris Brown song and sometimes Chris Brown will just pop up and just, you know, watch the class, talk to the dancers and like interact with people. 
Now, this is very common in the dance space. It's just a way for artists to just say, you know, I appreciate you, I see you, I love your work, and, you know, basically encourage choreographers, right? So this is not anything to be alarmed about, but it was very interesting because, you know, I know that Nicole Kirkland has interacted with Chris Brown. So when I saw her in the dream, you know, it wasn't surprising. Now, I used to dance when I was young and I also danced in college. So this is why I was able to recognize that it was Nicole Kirkland because before I got saved in my free time, I used to watch a lot of, you know, dancing choreography videos. So with that being said, going back to the dream, I asked one of the background dancers what's going on and she ends up saying that this is an audition to learn some new choreo for Chris Brown's new music video. Okay, so I end up standing in the crowd, getting ready to learn the choreo. But right when I'm about to start learning the moves, I look down and realize I don't have any socks on my feet. So I had on my black and white panda dunks that I have in real life. I was wearing those shoes, but I didn't have socks on. So yeah, when I looked down at my feet and realized I wasn't wearing any socks, that's when I woke up. So that was the end of the dream. The fact that I wasn't wearing socks with my shoes in the dream was just very bizarre because I wear socks in real life with my sneakers, okay? So I was just like, you know, I can tell the Lord is trying to speak to me through the socks. So I ended up, you know, just doing some general research on the purpose of socks. So socks are used for protection, moisture control, temperature regulation, comfort, and it's also used as a safeguard against blisters. So as I was thinking about the purpose of socks, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Joanne, socks are a form of undergarments. And I was like, okay. Then the Lord had me think about the purpose of underwear. Okay, right. So Underwear, we all know, is used for protection, hygiene, temperature control, modesty, friction regulation, and things like that. So socks and underwear have a very similar function. And once I had that understanding, the Holy Spirit led me back to the first part of this dream. Okay, I'm running out of time, so please go to part two. Hi, everyone. It's Joanne Gabriel, and I'm here with part two of the prophecy concerning Chris Brown and his female fans. So if you haven't watched part one, I highly encourage you to go watch that first. So at the end of part one, I was wrapping up and basically just saying that socks and underwear have a very similar function. And the Holy Spirit led me back to the first part of the dream where me and Chris Brown were in a bed and things were going on. So to connect the two scenes of this dream, the Holy Spirit led me to Jeremiah 14 verse 10. And it says, this is what the Lord says about this people. They greatly love to wander. They do not restrain their feet. So the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. Now in this verse where it says these people and they, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that the Lord is actually talking about women that don't wear socks. In other words, women that don't wear undergarments. So basically in this dream, the Lord was putting me in the position and in the shoes of women that love Chris Brown, admire him, and also have a desire to dance for him. So when I got this understanding, the Lord spoke to me and said this, many women love to wonder at Chris Brown. They idolize him and love his attention. These women do not restrain or protect themselves when they are around him. So the Lord is basically saying that there are some women, especially in the dance choreography space, that throw themselves at Chris Brown, knowing his history and knowing his patterns of abuse, okay? So the Lord went on to say that there are particularly women who attend Nicole Kirkland's classes that act in this manner. Now, the interesting thing is the Lord revealed to me that even though women act in this way, they throw themselves at Chris Brown, they then turn around and try to be a victim. And this is actually angering the Lord. The Lord is not pleased with this type of behavior. So this is a word of the Lord to women that are acting like victims, even though you intentionally are putting yourself in spaces with Chris Brown, trying to get his attention. This is the word of the Lord concerning you. The Lord says, I do not accept your cries. Repent for idolatry and lust, specifically lust of the flesh and material things. The Lord also says, repent for fornication. Now, this is a word for Chris Brown and the woman. The Lord says, everything done in the dark will come to the light. This is why in the first scene of the dream, it was very dark. A lot of, you know, adult activity was going on. But in the second part of the dream, it was daytime. You know, I could see everything and there was a bunch of women. So the Lord is saying, whatever has been done in the dark will come to the light if you do not repent. 
So just to reiterate what was revealed through this dream, the Lord says that Chris Brown uses love bombing, he's a womanizer, and he also abuses his fame and power towards women. Then the Lord went on to reveal that there's a lot of women that throw themselves to him, but then try to play the victim, right? And the Lord is not pleased with this either. So for Chris Brown and the women that admire him and you're in his circles and you're, you know, doing things with him, but you're then trying to act like a victim, right? When things don't go your way, the Lord is saying both of you guys need to repent, Chris and all of these women. This is the word of the Lord concerning Chris Brown and his female fans, but I just need to say this as well. Guys, we're in the hour of exposure. A lot of people and a lot of things will be exposed in this hour. So even if you're not a celebrity, you need to repent. Anything that you've done in the dark is going to come to the light. This is not just a word for Chris Brown. It's literally a word for the body of Christ. If you're doing secret sin, if you're sinning in the dark thinking, oh, nobody sees it, no one's going to know, the Lord sees it and you're going to be exposed in public. Okay, so this is really a word of the Lord for everybody. Right, We all need to get into the secret place, come out of our secret sins and repent.